I want to show you the secrets to some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen. There is unbelievable untapped potential in the systems I want to walk you through in this video, and it feels like almost no one knows about it. So, DaVinci Resolve. The free video editing software that's only getting more and more popular every day. It's even coming to iPad, if you hadn't heard. But anyway, DaVinci Resolve is what this channel is all about. And more specifically, uh, presets, templates, and plugins for DaVinci Resolve. I think I've done some pretty wild stuff on this channel, but to finally get to the point, in the last video, I released a pack of super simple drag and drop masking effects for the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. That video is doing great. I recommend you go watch it. If you haven't seen it, maybe pick up the pack. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create those drag and drop presets for yourself. And honestly, with the systems and tools you'll learn about in this video, the sky's kind of the limit, so let's get started. Now we are starting right here in the Fusion page. Uh, I just have a super blank timeline. There is nothing on here at all. I could drag on like a Fusion composition, but if your timeline is empty and you open the Fusion competition, uh, the second you create anything, it will also create a media out and back on the edit page. Hey, it makes that Fusion composition for you. So we can start in the edit page. Uh, and I just created this background node to start with. It's a solid black background, and we are actually going to keep this. Uh, I'm going to make this white instead, and then we can talk some preset basics. We are going to be creating effect, something you could drag right onto a clip on the timeline or onto an adjustment layer, depending on how you uh, want it to function. The presets we're making are meant to be dropped right on the clip. So when we are in Fusion, we need a source for that input. And all that means in this construction of our node tree is that we need one open input somewhere in our scene. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna drag on this gameplay clip I have, and this will serve as the stand-in for the uh, input of whatever effect we drag on. So I'm gonna use this to build the effect, but when I uh, package up the effect, I'm not going to include this media in node. And the first thing we're gonna look at is this super bare bones rectangle mask. And you're gonna be pretty shocked at how this is. Uh, if you're used to fusion at all, this might make more sense. But if you're not used to fusion, this is a really great sort of introductory composition. Okay, I have this gameplay footage. I have this white background. I am going to connect the output of the media in to the output of that background, and it will automatically create a merge node for me. Now I have that background, and I have the merge going on on top. Now, you might notice uh, this media in uh, is 4K, and the background is 1080, and my timeline is actually 1080. Uh, we can kind of ignore that. If you don't know, this is really valuable if you're building these effects. If you drag an effect onto any clip on your timeline, even a clip of a mismatched resolution, what it functionally does is create a sort of compound clip of that effect, take all of that and plug it into the effect you apply on it, at least fusion effects. So even if you have a 4K clip on your timeline, if that timeline is 1080, if you drag an effect onto that, it'll bring a 1080 scaled down version of that clip into the effect. So I can uh, kind of ignore this if I want, or, you know, just to demonstrate, I can add, you know, a, a transform, uh, and scale that down here. Cool. Yeah, right to that 0.5. But it will be important that I do not include this transform um, in the final effect as well. But we've got uh, a background. We've got that merge bringing in that footage. And what I am going to do, uh, I don't have any nodes selected right now. I'm going to click this rectangle mask. And by default, yeah, that's just a mask. Uh, it does show us this black and white image. This is mask data. It's dealing with the alpha layer. So it's saying, hey, black is transparent, uh, white is solid. And I can bring this down and I can plug this right into that merge node and uh, masks on merge node merge the foreground element. So now if I preview that media out, well, wow, we have that white background and then we have our uh, uh, clip, uh, whatever we want to pipe in here, mask. Now, the little extra step I am taking here is that we're also building out that included outline option in these masking presets, just going a, a little bit extra further um, in the functionality of these. But I do like this a lot, and it gives us a really cool uh, example to show off some cool functionality uh, here, that being instance nodes. I talk about instance nodes all the time, super powerful. Look at this. I'm going to copy this rectangle mask, control C, and then I'm going to click control shift V. It pastes a copy, kind of, of that node, except it has this green line connecting them, so you know it's an instanced node. And if I take the output of that instance node and instead mask this background, then it looks like it disappears here. If we preview that background just by itself before the footage is brought on top of it with the merge, hey, that background has been perfectly uh, masked to that same shape. So now uh, we have two masks, 
masking two different objects. Of course, uh, we could always just look at this first rectangle mask, look to the background, take the output of that and mask the background. So one uh, mask can mask multiple elements, but we don't want that because we want to use the power of instanced nodes. And I'm gonna do that by going into this instance and you'll see all these parameters have this green outline. That means uh, that they are instanced. Uh, instance nodes are sort of like a selective copy. So I can come into this border width, right click and go to D instance. And then now if I preview that media out, if I click that instance rectangle and pull up the border width, hey, we have a little outline. And importantly, very importantly, if I go to either the instance or the original, uh, all the other controls are linked. So if I change this center anywhere, the outline moves along with it. Super cool. I am also going to go into this instance rectangle uh, and right click and de instance this level as well, because uh, this will functionally just be the opacity for that. If you don't want the outline, you can bring it down. And now this is our little four node node tree, but this is really all we need. Um, I will come back to this rectangle, uh, just get it back in the center, square up these numbers a little bit. I'm gonna select these four nodes, right click, and go to macro, create macro. That gives us our this really cool pop-up when you're here. So I'm gonna uh, just type in a name like cool rectangle mask. Great, now there's a lot of stuff here. But what you need to know, if I close this, you'll see we have four little entries here because we have four nodes in our scene. And if I open up anything uh, like this main rectangle mask, all the other options here are all the individual controls that you normally have access to in the inspector. And if I check this box, it will uh, export or include those controls in our edit page effect. So uh, to make things simple, I'm just gonna check all of these under this controls option. Come all the way down. Uh, including that, 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 that. Yeah, just about everything. I'm stopping at the last thing I, I sort of recognize or this angle slider. I didn't include all of these in, in the pack I made. I kept it a little simpler, um, but to demonstrate, this is gonna work great. Uh, but then I can also come into this background. Uh, I can come to color. I'm going to select these uh, several options, this first red, green, blue, alpha, and rename that color something like outline color. That's another fun thing you can do. Uh, I changed that. You can change the name and that will change how it shows up on the edit page. And the last things we need are in this first instance, I'm just going to choose uh, level and border width. And I will call that outline level outline width. Cool. Now, all we have to do is come up to this little file button. Uh, you can either choose save as or save as group. Uh, I choose save as group. And what that allows you to do is after the fact, um, you can open your uh, preset backup in Fusion and see the exact nodes uh, that are used to make it. It'll actually make this a group that you can open up and see what's going on. If you just choose save as, it'll just show up uh, as one node. Uh, but I like save as group. I can save to this location. I save lots of stuff. Cool rectangle mask. I will save that. Then I can go ahead and close this macro. I'm going to open up my effects library, come to templates, edit, effects. You could always click right on this effects. I have a little subfolder I've already created here called test. And all I'm going to do is pull that folder back up. I have this cool rectangle mask and I'm going to drop that right on to this little area. Again, if you, uh, you're probably not going to have this test folder, you could just click effects and drag it right in there. You can even see the last thing I had in this test folder was uh, when I was testing these masks, but it has shown up there. And now if we go back to the edit page, I'll drag on a fresh copy of this clip. And then I will open my effects library. Effects. Test. We have cool rectangle mask. Drop it on. Boom. We've got a mask. Open the effects library. Uh, pull up the outline level. We've got an outline. And these control here, we can shift that correctly, everything tied together. Really important note, especially for what we're gonna talk about next. This isn't the end. We're gonna talk about more awesome, cool tips and tricks. If I come down to Fusion Overlay, then yeah, you have these tactile controls. You can stretch it around, rotate it, do all this fun stuff. It all stays linked. And yeah, you have masks on the edit page. Now, if you pick up my existing pack of masks or just watch that previous video, you'll see that this is how the rectangle and circle masks work. They have these defined shapes that you can modify, uh, but I include some other masks that are uh, a little more interesting. Really the four point mask, eight point mask, and then I have a custom mask. 
So let's hop back into Fusion. Uh, I'm gonna use this exact same comp and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that rectangle mask. And instead, I'm going to create a polygon mask, pipe that right into the same spots for each of those, copy, instance, instance going on in the background. And hey, everything disappears. That's because I've not drawn or like clicked to make a mask here. But for instance, if I just click four dots, close that up, boom, that is the area that is being masked. Now, I went through a lot of work to, you know, make this look a little nicer in my presets. We don't need to do that, but there is one thing I wanna draw your attention to real quick, and that is these options up here. You'll see uh, I had this first click append when I was first drawing this mask. Once I connected it, it went over to this insert and modify. And that means if I click anywhere else on this mask, it will add a point. Uh, in this instance, I don't want that. I'll delete that point. But um, that means if we were to publish this as is and give the uh, user on the edit page control over that, if they were to click that, they would also add a point there. And uh, you know, I wanted to like have it be uh, controlled and simple. So we just did a four point and an eight point, although you can still uh, delete them on either of those anyway. But if I move from this first insert and modify to the second modify only, then I can take the points, move them around. But if I click in the middle, it does not add a point. That's great. So I could go through those same steps of uh, de-instance this uh, level, de-instance this border width. This is on the background mask, so pull it up, have the outline. And then here, the only real difference is that when we went and right-clicked macro create macro, uh, when I was selecting all of these options, I will just do it very, I'll, I'll only select the option I need here. If I were to come into polygon one and scroll down, we have the, all these options we uh, selected before, but what we want is to look for this option polyline here. Uh, right now, this does have, I'll actually go ahead and close this. Uh, no, I'm not saving. Uh, by default, when you draw a lot of these, it does set an initial keyframe, but you can always right click and remove that key and try to move that key. Uh, it might not like that I, I uh, created an instance node before I tried to do that. So I'll select the polygon, remove that key or just click it to undo it. Great. And then copy, make that instance node, connect it, uh, the instance, uh, the instance, pull up that background. Cool. So now if I uh, right click or uh, select all those, right click, create macro in that polygon one, I want to come down until I see polyline. Uh, right now that has a crazy name that right click for shape animation. We can just name that to something like mask points. Cool. And this is actually the only thing I'm going to publish because this is just to demonstrate. I will name this like cool for whoops for points great file save as group save to that same location i have this test folder open i can drag in cool four points wait a wait a few seconds let resolve do its thing it's hopped in now if i hop back to the edit page drag in a fresh clip drag on uh, fx test cool four points then you'll see, hey, it is still that box. And I didn't check all those other boxes for the other controls. The only thing we have here is mask points. But because I am still looking at this fusion overlay, it's a little hard to see because it perfectly lines up. But you can see I can come in here now and just drag this point. And I have full control over moving these points on the edit page. Very, very cool. But wait, there is one more thing I need to show you. And that is the uh, extra bits that went into the custom mask I also created. It's it's very, very similar. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I can even come back into this exact instance, copy all these nodes and just delete them. That will uh, default back to this click append option. But here, um, I am not going to press anything. The only thing I am gonna press is on that polygon. I'm gonna click invert um, so that by default we see, we at least see our image and then I select all of those, uh, macro, create macro, um, cool, custom, polygon, controls, I'm coming down to polyline, I can name this uh, custom mask, and you know, just, just for fun, I'll come into background, select those same color options, so we can have control over that, and instance, level, and border width, that'll, that'll be, oh, Oh, and I should definitely come into polygon as well um, for, yeah, just like position. Cool. Cool custom, save as group in that same default location, save, close. I've got test open. 
Dragon Cool Custom. Let it do its thing. Cool Custom. Back to the edit page. Dragon a clip. Back to test. Cool Custom. Drop it on it. And hey, make sure we're clicking on the right thing. By default, you know, there is no existing mask yet, right? We are still on that fusion overlay. But remember, um, the effect is still going to that like click append mode. So now all we have to do is just click in frame and we'll start adding points. And you can click drag uh, even to add all this other stuff, get very wobbly with it. And as soon as you close that mask, boom, you have this, uh, you can hop, oh, I, whoops. <laughs> I didn't include uh, that invert option in, in my pack. I have that published. So all you have to do is sort of like uninvert it to get that mask the inside which then is necessary to see the outline. Even though I didn't publish those, I can click this button to load back into the Fusion page, open that up, and you see, hey, all these nodes are still here. I click Polygon, uncheck Invert, we're back in action. You've got your funky custom mask working. It's great. And that's kind of like all my secrets. Not all my secrets, a lot of my secrets. All things considered, these are relatively simple effects. A while ago, I did show off a similar process uh, with creating this really cool like magnify effect, but both that and this, I think are great places to get started. And especially something like masks, just like such high utility. The functionality that makes this possible was added to Resolve in Resolve 17 over two years ago. And in that time, no one has created basic masking effects until I did last week. But hopefully that's encouraging. There is so much opportunity and there's so much that hasn't been done. Almost anything you can do in the Fusion page, which is a lot, can be turned into a drag and drop preset on the edit page. And on top of all this cool functionality and all the stuff you can do, it's really fun. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. I hope you're excited uh, to start messing around with this process. Uh, if you want to recreate these masks, go for it. Uh, if you like the masks, but don't want to go through that little extra work, Hey, I've got a pack you can pick up for a few bucks. If you want to see any of the other uh, dozens of drag and drop presets I've made for Resolve, you know those are on the channel or on the site. Click around, there's some cool stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.